Hello, and welcome to the July 2023 Economic and Market Update, presented by Commonwealth Financial Network. My name is Brad McMillan, and I'm Commonwealth's Chief Investment Officer. June was a strong month and closed out a generally strong quarter, especially for U.S. stocks. The U.S. indices were up significantly for the month, and both the S&P and NASDAQ also showed strong gains for the quarter, although the Dow lagged. International markets also did well in June, but even with that gain ended the quarter basically flat. Fixed income, on the other hand, was much weaker for both the month and the quarter. Financial markets were clearly in a risk-on mode, benefiting riskier investments like tech stocks at the expense of more boring ones. The market performance reflected the underlying economy. The first quarter's economic growth was just revised up significantly, and strong job creation during the last quarter should keep that trend going. More jobs has meant continued income and spending growth, and last month also saw consumer confidence rise significantly. A strong economy is good for corporate earnings, and stock prices reflected that. That surprisingly strong growth, however, is a downside in what it means for inflation, and thus for fixed income performance. While the Federal Reserve did pause its rate increases last month, officials are warning that more increases are likely. And longer-term interest rates moved up on that, which was a headwind for bonds. That said, though, the inflation news continues to get better. While still too high, inflation is coming down, reaching the lowest level in some time last month. While the Fed's still committed to lower inflation, there's real evidence that their policy is working. And that could mean rates will stabilize at or close to current levels. So on the whole, last month's news was good. The economy continued to grow as more people got jobs and worked and spent. While inflation is still too high, it's moving in the right direction. And while the Fed remains alert, they're very likely nearing the end of the rate increases. But while the outlook remains positive, of course, there are still risks. The biggest domestic risk is that inflation spikes again, which could drive interest rates higher and force the Fed to keep hiking. Beyond the U.S., of course, we still have a war in Europe, as well as the China wild card. And that's not even considering the risks we don't see yet. Nothing is guaranteed. But despite those risks, as we look ahead, the fundamentals are still healthy. The economy may be slowing, but it is still growing. We settled the biggest potential political disruption of the economy last month, which is a big positive. And while there are still real concerns around inflation, the likelihood is that we'll keep making progress. And that's a good way to start the summer. So that's it for this update. Thanks for watching. Join me in August for the next one. But until then, be sure to check my blog, The Independent Market Observer, for more timely comments. Stay safe, stay sane, and stay healthy. And have a terrific summer.